Welcome to another session with Guru Wanda. I'm your host, Gurvinder Singh. We often, a question always arises, should the leader lead from the front or should the leader lead from behind? No situation is absolute. Situations are dynamic, resources are changing all the time, situations are warrant different approaches. But generally speaking, what does the leader do? Leader actually leads people providing the resources to achieve a particular objective in a particular way which they have strategized and get and motivate their team to do so. To select the challenge, they uh, find the right resources and motivate their people. Very often the leader leading from the front gets disengaged from the army. What he or she is thinking, planning, strategizing, how the plan fits in together, what are their goals, what are their milestones. A leader from the front, disengaged from the army, is no leader at all. He's just ahead of his army, but he's not leading because they're really not following. They're just sort of like wandering through. So the first thing that a leader does is actually leading from the front, infects the, the next rank of people and his army or her army on what is to be done, how it has to be done, who will do what, how the responsibilities are going to be uh, uh, allotted, how the tasks will be allotted, what the mission will be, provide the resources, and then the leader has to, after having delegated power, authority, resources, everything to his team, moves to the rear of the army, getting out of the way, and then create like a, like in a game of soccer, like the, the back, feeding the army with corrective action instructions or uh, or uh, uh, helping them with any kind of assistance that they need from a place in which the leader is not in the heat of the war or the action. So I think that leaders should be in the initial phases, in the formative stages, in the strategizing phase, they should be in the front. Having done that, created a team which shared the vision, where shared the plan, moved back and then support. Sometimes people just appoint some uh, a management team, but do not brief them, do not motivate them, do not guide them. This is not delegation, this is abdication, which is worse than bad leadership. So having delegated, the leader moves to the back and provides the necessary support. So in the initial phases, the leader should lead from the front and in the latter stages uh, from the rear. One of the advantages is once a project or a, a, a team is working on a project and they're moving and they are gaining momentum and traction and they're moving well, the leader actually has time to look at innovation, new projects, uh, new ventures uh, in, in, a, in a sort of stress-free kind of a manner. And the quality of those decisions uh, is also great, which ensures the success of the new next project. More important, should for some reason the leader be incapacitated, the army and its objectives and its target will continue and achieve whatever their goals are. The probability of achieving that is very much higher. I'm reminded of a quote by Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu was this Chinese uh, philosopher. 
6th century BC philosopher. And he says, which type of leader is the best? The highest type of leader is the one whose existence the people are barely aware of. Next comes the leader whom they love and praise. Next comes the leader whom they fear. Next comes the one whom they despise and defy. The good leader speaks little and keeps himself in the background. When his task is complete and all things have been uh, all things have been completed and the objective has been achieved, all the people will say, we achieved it ourselves. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do press the like and share button and subscribe to my channel. Until I see you again, I wish you all the very best and look forward to seeing you again shortly. Thank you.